Hi everybody, in this video we're going to talk about using the Pythagorean Theorem. Use the Pythagorean Theorem by plugging in what you know and solving for what you don't. And really that's what you should do for any equation. You plug in what you know, you solve for what you're looking for. Now let's go ahead and use that to solve this problem over here. Use the Pythagorean Theorem to find the length of the missing side. Show your work. So let's go ahead and write the Pythagorean Theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, a and b stand for the legs and c stands for the hypotenuse. So that means that, well over here, if I look at this uh, triangle, here is the right angle. So this angle over here is 90 degrees and I know that because I have this little square symbol written over here. And that means that this side length, which is 15 units long, and this side length, which is eight units long, are the legs of the triangle. How do I know that? Because remember, the legs of the of a right triangle are the sides that connect to form the right angle. So these two sides are the legs. It looks like what I'm looking for here is the hypotenuse, which is the side that is opposite the right angle. Okay, now remember over here, a and B stand for the legs and C stands for the hypotenuse. Now I know what the legs are. I know that they're eight and 15. So I can go ahead and plug that in, plug those numbers in for A and B. And by the way, it does not matter which one you call A and which one you call B. So it looks like just based on how I wrote this, I'm calling this side over here A and I'm calling this side over here B. But if I had called this side A and this side B, then the only difference would be instead of 8 squared plus 15 squared, I would have gotten 15 squared plus 8 squared. But those expressions both evaluate to the exact same thing. So it doesn't matter which one you call A and which one you call B. Um, because again, since we're adding these together, we're adding the squares of them together. All right, based on the commutative property, we can switch it around. So it, it, it just doesn't matter which one we call which. But what does matter here is what we call the hypotenuse. So 15 is not the hypotenuse, 8 is not the hypotenuse. This side is the hypotenuse and we don't know what it is. So we just have to write over here C squared and C is what we're looking for. Okay, so let's just go ahead and evaluate this. 15 squared means 15 times 15. 8 squared means 8 times 8. Okay, and then, so, oops, so 15 times 15 is 225. 8 times 8 is 64. And this c squared is just sort of coming along for the ride. I'm not doing anything with that yet. Uh, 225 plus 64 is 289. Okay, now, I didn't quite get the C by itself yet. I want to know what C is. I don't want to know what C to the second power is. So this is telling me if I take the value for C and I multiply it with itself, C times C, I would get 289. So now I have to think what number multiplied by itself gives us 289. Okay, and that number would be 17, but just in general, the way that we would get rid of an exponent of 2 is by taking the square root of both sides. You know what? I'm going to write that in a separate line. So if I take the square root of c squared, then again, just like adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, whatever I do to one side of an equation, I have to do the same thing to the other side. So that means I would also have to take the square root of 289 on this side. Okay, so these two things cancel and we have just c all by itself. And now I want to know what the square root of 289 is, which is the same question that I asked a moment ago. What number multiplied with itself gives you 289? And the answer is 17. But what you can do if you're not sure is you can just go ahead and use a calculator. Oh, it looks like that's another problem I was doing earlier. Uh, so we have 289. And then if your calculator looks like this, it might look a little bit different. But if you have a calculator like this one, you would just hit this button over here after typing in 289, and that'll tell you the square root of 289, which is 17. What that means is 17 times 17 equals 289, okay? 
So we're going to write over here 17, and that means that this side must be 17 units long. Okay, C equals 17. Okay, so now let's go ahead and solve another problem. So we're going to write the Pythagorean theorem again. A squared, I like using pink. I don't know why, but I want to switch to pink here. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, now remember, it doesn't matter which leg you call A and it doesn't matter which leg you call B, but C is the hypotenuse. Okay, C must be the hypotenuse. And it looks like in this triangle over here, the hypotenuse, which remember is the side which is opposite the right angle, is 13 units long. So I have to plug that in for C. Okay, what I'm looking for in this problem is I'm looking for one of the legs uh, of this triangle over here, of this right triangle. Now again, it does not matter um, where I plug in this five. If five is one of the legs, then it doesn't matter if I plug it in for A or for B. So I'm going to go ahead and just plug that in for um, B over here. So let's call this B, let's call this A. Um, so five squared. So now I have A squared plus five squared equals 15 squared. So I'm trying to figure out what A is. I'm trying to figure out what this side length is. Okay, now let's go ahead and solve this equation. We have A squared plus five squared means five times five equals 13 squared means 13 times 13. So we have A squared plus five times five is 25 equals 13 times 13 is 169. And then we want to get the A by itself. So the first thing we'll do is, since this is plus 25, the inverse of addition is subtraction. We will subtract 25 from both sides. Cancels here. We get A squared equals uh, 144. And then what we want to do is get rid of this exponent. So we're going to take the square root of A squared and then also, to keep things balanced, take the square root of 144. These cancel. So we're, we have a, and then we're squaring it and then taking the square root. So we're just left with a again, equals the square root of 144. So basically back here, we're asking ourselves what number multiplied with itself gives us 144. And that's the same question that we're asking by finding the square root of 144. The square root of 144 by definition means what number squared with itself, the number which squared with itself um, gives us 144. Or I should say the number which multiplied with itself gives us 144. Okay, and that number is 12. Again, just to show you on a calculator, you can type in 144 and then hit the square root button and that gives you 12, which just means that 12 times 12 is 144. So we found that A is equal to 12 so this side length over here is equal to 12. Okay, so if I have a right triangle here and one of the one of the legs is five units long, the hypotenuse is 13 units long, the other leg must be 12 units long. So that is using the Pythagorean theorem. That's it, and have a great day.